Hey, welcome to Socialism for All. Today's date is May 1st, 2020, May Day, International Workers' Day, what would be known as Labor Day in the United States if the United States didn't have a government that was completely terrified of workers being organized, socialism in general. And what I have for you is an audiobook of a pamphlet originally distributed by the IWW. Honestly, not sure which site I got this from, so my apologies to whoever was hosting this. The pamphlet is called Common Sense Reasons for Worker Self-Management, and seems pretty fitting with the theme uh, today for, uh, for May Day. So I'll just get right into it. How bosses get rich and powerful at our expense. What do bosses do? Scheduling. Deciding when work needs to be done. Setting deadlines. This could just as easily be done by the workers themselves. Coordinating. Making sure that activities which depend on each other don't hold each other up. Making sure resources are distributed to those who need them. Often the centralized control of resources is more of a bottleneck that keeps people from getting what they need to do their jobs. Much of this is actually done informally by the workers themselves. Accounting. This is a clerical job counting the money you make for them. Budgeting. The actual cost estimates are done by those who do the work and only compiled by the manager. The manager then sets priorities. Staffing. Hiring, firing, and assigning people to tasks. The less work a boss does, the more they're paid. This is because they are not paid for doing actual work. They are paid for how well they get others to do the most work for the least compensation. It also occurs because bosses tend to use their power to make themselves richer. What do stockholders do? Nothing. Capitalists buy part of a company stock is a measure of ownership, and receive a portion of the value of what its workers produce, profit taken from workers called a stock dividend, or rent their money to a company by buying bonds and are paid interest. They do no work for this money outside of the kind of brain work a thief would use in choosing an easy victim. Where do profits come from? You. The cost of running a business is the money spent for labor, machinery and tools, materials, rent, utilities, interest on loans, maintenance, and other services. The value of labor is the difference between the income of the business and its non-labor expenses. Profit is the difference between the labor value and the money the boss actually pays the workers in salary and benefits. A boss's performance is usually measured by how much profit they can squeeze out of you. Many are paid in stock or profit sharing to make them greedier. Having a boss is a dictatorship. Failure to follow orders results in discipline or being fired. Modern production was invented by Henry Ford, who wanted to reduce the actions of the workers to the repetitive motions of machine, and Frederick Taylor, who wanted to minimize the number of motions to maximize the productivity of each worker. Bosses design work tasks to dehumanize workers. Many workplaces require you to work overtime. Many workers are paid a fixed salary instead of by the hour, so they can be worked as much as the boss likes without paying them for overtime. Most workplaces discourage dissent, worker organizing, or even asking questions of management outside of how, how to follow their orders. Many workplaces pretend to involve workers in decision-making to get them to spy on each other. Many workplaces spy on their workers using time clocks, computer programs, hidden cameras, informers, and even private detectives. Some workplaces even limit the number of times and amount of time workers may spend going to the bathroom. Many workplaces now require workers to wear uniforms. Bosses are inefficient. Many managers create unnecessary work or make you redo work their way just to justify their job or to make you think you have to go through them to get your work done. Many managers create empires of things under their centralized control so you can't get resources or information you need to do your day-to-day -day work. Without a boss, access to these crucial resources would be decentralized and made available based on need. Bosses can get you killed. Work is one of the leading causes of death from accidents and health problems. Accidents occur when the boss tries to speed up the work to increase their profit. Bosses try to cut costs by cutting safety measures and practices on the job. Jobs can be stressful due to overwork, harassment, competition, scheming, manipulation, etc. by bosses and coworkers who think they can kiss their ass to get ahead. Stress will hurt your health, weaken your body, and ultimately shorten your life. 
Accidents at work kill people, but bad working conditions are no accident. But workers need to be told what to do. Why? Workers get together on the job informally all the time to talk about how to do a job or solve a problem on the job. They don't ask the boss because they don't know how to do the work. Workers regularly get together with friends or family members to make decisions without the need for a boss. They go out to have a good time together. They plan vacations and road trips. They make management-type decisions all the time about their home and personal life. But bosses go to school to learn how to be managers. Actually, most of them don't have degrees in business administration or public administration. Master's degree programs in these fields teach accounting and capitalist economics, but you won't learn anything about people or problem solving which you don't already know from experience. Comment? I have a degree like that. Me personally, at Socialism for All. Goddamn most fucking useless waste of my time ever. If I could get that money and time back that I spent on that degree, boy would I take it. My undergrad? Pretty useful. It's probably why I'm doing this podcast. But a, deg a degree like that? Totally fucking useless. Okay, moving on. What you learn is management and motivational theory. How to exploit people through psychology. Most managers, bosses, just have business degrees at best, which is a degree in capitalism. Banking, accounting, profiteering, etc. But bosses create jobs? No. The boss only hires and fires you. Jobs are created because the boss sees a chance, chance to get richer, but the amount of work involved is greater than what those who currently work for the boss can do alone. Bosses will do anything possible to avoid hiring new workers, including assigning more tasks to each worker, work speedups, buying machines to take workers' jobs, and paying overtime. Overtime costs a boss less than hiring a new worker, but the workers who work overtime actually get paid less than that additional work after they pay income tax. It may even increase their tax rate. But my boss is nice. Well, don't trust them. A boss is a boss is a boss is a boss. The boss knows that their job depends on being able to exploit you. You can depend on them only to tell you what you want to hear. The boss you think you know and trust is a facade. If you work hard, they'll work you harder. If you do a good job at work, they'll criticize the quality of your work, then take credit for it in front of their boss. They will use your work to get themselves a promotion. If there's a problem at work, they'll tell their boss it's your fault. If you know more than your boss, they will try to get you fired or harass you so you'll quit or make mistakes they can use against you to get you fired. They'll tell you things like, I want to help you, or you're overqualified. When you hear this, you'll know the end is near. But what if the boss is the owner? Well, first of all, most small businesses are usually owned by the bank through a mortgage or small business loan. And the landlord, most are in rented commercial property, who collect money from you through your boss for doing nothing. It is arguable that many small business owners, operators work harder than if they were working for someone else. But the chances are, even if they do, they still don't pay their workers for the full value of the work their workers do. The best evidence of this is that while you have to ride the bus to work, the boss owns a car. While you have to rent or share an apartment, the boss has a house. Obviously, you can't afford to live like your boss, and even the hardest working boss doesn't do that much more than you do to be equal to the difference in the money each of you get out of the business. But if I work hard and do what I'm told, can I be rich and successful? People who work hard and are smart at what they do are usually viewed as a threat by their boss because they probably know as much or more about the work than those in charge. Working for a boss isn't competitive. Chances are, if your boss wants to hire or promote someone, they'll choose someone they think is like them or a friend, regardless of their qualifications. Take a look around you. How many rich people do you see? There aren't a lot compared to the rest of us. Now, common sense tells us that if you subtract the majority of rich people who merely inherited their money, there's only a handful left and they got all their money from owning stock or property and not from honest work. At best, hard work can make you comfortable. At worst, it will make you sick and your boss rich. The best way to ensure that you're working for yourself is to have no boss at all. How would we work without bosses? Well, how are decisions made? Workers are organized into working groups based on what they do, their tasks. Decisions are made democratically by those who do the work. 
Each group sends a representative to all coordinating meetings for their section of the workplace. Each section coordinating committee sends a representative to the coordination committee for the workplace. Representatives can be changed at any time by the group who chooses them. They have no authority over those groups. Conflicts are resolved through mediation and arbitration by someone neutral and impartial. How is work organized? Working groups plan the work and divide up the tasks. Without a boss, you don't have to wait for the boss to okay something. You just agree with your coworkers what needs to be done. Workers desi- decide for themselves which jobs they wish to learn. Coordinating committees coordinate scheduling and the allocation of group resources to projects. It is also how working groups share information and find out what's going on at the workplace. The Workplace Coordinating Committee coordinates budgeting and major functions like accounting, purchasing, and sales so that production is based on demand for the products or services of the workplace. New workers are brought into a workplace when the current workers agree more people are needed. How are the workers paid? The workers decide how much of the income earned by their work goes to keep the business going and how much goes to them as compensation for their labor. Without make work from bosses, every job becomes equally necessary, both physical work and brain work. The workers may choose to each take an equal share or to pay everyone based on how many hours they work. Without stockholders and overpaid bosses, more money goes to those who actually do the work. What about benefits? Without bosses, workers are no longer considered expendable. Medical care, dental care, child care, disability, vacation time, sick time, and retirement are considered part of the cost of maintaining the workplace and are paid for out of the earnings of the workplace. The workplace also covers the cost of your tools, safety equipment, and training. What about promotions? Tasks are assigned based on your skills and abilities, what you know and can do. There's no kissing ass because no one tells anyone else what to do, and people are paid based on their work and not their position. You learn on the job how to do more and more complex tasks. Self-managed workplaces have apprenticeship intern procedures for new workers. The only promotion is in the area of responsibility. Since no one is in charge, the working group gives the most responsibility to those they trust. The reward is personal satisfaction and respect. By doing away with the real parasites in the workplace, bosses, you have a lot more people to do the work, and you can reduce the amount of work everyone has to do to be productive. This means that the workday can be shorter and more flexible, and that work won't be as strenuous. People can also choose to work part-time. Without a boss, the stress at work would be lower. What about shirkers? Shirking is usually a subconscious response to being exploited. Without exploitation, there will be less incentive to shirk off work. Those who still want to stand by and let their co-workers do the work while they do nothing will be stealing from them. It is up to the workers to decide if and when someone's laziness is unfair to the rest of them. Workers who try to live off the work of others while doing nothing will be kicked out of the job at the discretion of their co-workers. So, um, that is this pamphlet, end of audiobook, and uh, there's a little bit of like contact information for the IWW. We'll say if you want to contact the IWW, IWW.org is a good place to start. But um, there's a pamphlet uh, for International Workers' Day about the basics of worker self-management. If you're interested in this topic, of course, you know, there are, uh, you know, there's a little bit of a false dichotomy when it comes to um, ideas of like state socialism versus quote, libertarian socialism or like anarchist ideas of, uh, you know, autonomous um, worker self-management, because even in like larger scale, um, you know, national revolutions and things like that, there's usually still like big networks of cooperatives like this. So these kinds of fundamentals of worker cooperatives and democratic, you know, self-governance and industrial democracy they're really fundamental no matter what kind of or you know what stripe or flavor of socialist you consider yourself. So I'll just put that out there on a note of left unity. Thank you for listening to Socialism for All. Facebook.com slash Socialism for All. Patreon.com slash Socialism for All. Please remember to like, share, subscribe, comment. You can support us for as little as a dollar a month on Patreon. And thanks to our current pa- patrons whose names are on the screen.